Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So today I am working on a challenge for the Facebook group Creative Tartanite Tribe. And that group is run by my lovely friend Tanya, who has a YouTube channel called Tartan Taz Creates. And I'll put all the links in the description box below. Now the challenge was to use these two papers that you can see here that Tanya designed. So she sent these to me electronically and I have simply printed them off onto normal printer paper. And I've decided that what I'm going to do is to make a small envelope junk journal. So I have three envelopes there and I also have uh, some papers from a paper pack and just a few other bits and pieces that I'm going to use inside. Now later on in this video I will speed it up a little bit because sometimes I work at a snail's pace and I think you know I was working at a speed that was so slow that really I think at double speed you can still see what I'm doing but I'm just going to show you this bit first off at normal speed to show you how I'm going to attach the envelopes so you'll see that I've just slipped the kind of triangle flap of one envelope into the other what I'm now doing is taking the flap of what will be the front cover and actually creating a small bit of depth in what will become the spine of the journal. I didn't want it just to be the size it was because I would have only managed to slip in a couple of papers as a signature. So I've only made it, oh, probably around a quarter of an inch, there or thereabouts. So I'm just going over those two lines, making sure that they're straight as far as possible. And what I'll do is then to take the crease, that fold line in my second envelope, and make sure that it's at the outer edge of the first envelope. Then, with the third envelope, I will just use the, the triangle flap to attach it to that middle section. The idea then is that one side will fold in and the front will fold over on top. I'm going to be using a ruler, some double sided tape, my rotary cutter which I got from Aldi and also I understand it's available in Michaels and some glue stick. So here I am, I'm just attaching the double sided tape to the flap of what will be the middle envelope, so the second envelope along. I'll also use some glue stick on top of this because what it will do is it will take off that top level of stickiness from the tape and it will mean that if I need to reposition it a bit I can. Otherwise, if it goes in like that, it will just stick firm wherever it, wherever it touches. So I should also say, uh, you know, please do check out Tartan Taz's Tartan Taz Creates YouTube channel, as well as her Facebook group, Creative Tartanite Tribe. But if you go over to her channel now, you will see that she's actually got a giveaway going on. So it's, if you're not a subscriber of hers already, it's a good time to become one and to enter her giveaway. So there I am, I'm slipping that second envelope into the first one, just making sure that I get the position right so that it's going to give me that little quarter inch spine. There it is. I'm happy enough with that. I'm just making sure that it's firmly in place. Now I'm going to attach the third envelope to the back of the middle one. Now these were envelopes that came through the post with something else. I think they came with charity cards. I used the cards for something else, I altered them and was left with the envelopes and they're of a size that I probably wouldn't have used them for posting anything out so it seemed a good idea just to use them to make this little envelope journal. So again just making sure that I've got all the lines 
firmly in place. So, just checking the size here. So the envelopes are roughly four inches by five and a half inches. This could be used, any size of envelope could be used to make this though. It just happened these one, these were the ones that I had. Oh yeah, there you go. So you can see it's not quite a quarter of an inch there. So I'm just now looking, I decide I'm going to use this paper to cover the entire back of the envelopes, but I'm going to cut off that little white border to start with. Just going to use my rotary tool. And this self-healing mat. And just cut along the sides. So I had actually printed two copies of the papers and I use two of one and only one of the other. So I will use a bit more for other things. So just checking the size there, I'm going to have an excess along the bottom, but lengthwise it's too short. However, I decide that I will match the other piece of paper in. Now you'll see me several times measuring and remeasuring, and that's just because of that old adage, measure twice, cut once, but sometimes I have to measure more than twice. And it's not a bad thing just to keep checking back and forward. So there's still that little white edge down one side, but I know I can put that down because I'll be matching the other piece of paper in and over it. So just checking that I've got a nice fit there. Sometimes with something like this, I would uh, cut it a little bit bigger and then reduce it down. But today I decided just to, to try and get the measurements right. So again, just using my double-sided tape and I'm just going to put it along the length of the three envelopes, both at the top and at the bottom. And again, I will use the glue stick all over, including on top of that double-sided tape, because again, it means that if needs be, I can reposition my paper that's going on top. Otherwise, you get a once-only chance. And if you get it wrong, then that's it. You need to print more paper, I guess. Right, just going to take the tops off that, get my glue and go all over it. Because this was just a uh, printer paper that I was using, I decided not to use a wet glue. I didn't want to soak this paper too much. It was also an inkjet printer and, you know, there is the potential for it to, for the inks to run a little bit. Although if I am going to use a wet glue on that type of paper, then what I do is to give it a spray with a, a fixative, first of all. So just going to line this up and get it down and into place. I'm just trying to make sure that there's no air bubbles sitting underneath. Now you see here that I'm looking at 
how to match it up. And I guess it's the kind of same way you would match up wallpaper. Not that I've ever wallpapered, and we will see why I'm best not wallpapering in just a minute, because I do make a little mistake here. But I've left it in just to show you. So one of the things when I'd looked at this piece of paper, uh, printed paper, was, was there an upside and was there a, a downside? You know, was there a, a correct way up and down? And I figured that there actually wasn't, so that seemed fine to me. So I'm looking at where I can make the overlap so that it will actually fit in. And you'll see I'm being quite careful, marking it all. There are a lot of things that I will just eyeball sometimes, but this I decided to try and make it right to get it spot on. And at this point I'm thinking to myself, yep, this is good, this is going to work. Laying it down, I'm looking at those leaves and seeing that they'll match up. And then I kind of look at the bit of pattern next to it and I think, hmm, something's not quite right there. The pattern's not matching exactly. So, the thing was, it didn't really matter which side was up and which side was down or where the top and the bottom was, but I needed to apply both pieces of paper in the same way. And this piece that I'd cut just wasn't going to do that for me now. So I had to go back and cut another bit. And you'll see that I'm looking at this carefully just to make sure that the second time round I do match it in. There was nothing wasted though, I was able to use that other bit of paper for other things. So I am kind of faffing about a little bit at this point, but as I say, I just thought it was important to, to kind of keep that in and let you see. I did have a swither about whether I would just attach that other bit anyway. You know, I am trying to be less of a per perfectionist these days with certain things, but I just knew that that one thing would kind of annoy me. I knew it would, I would see it every time that I looked at this little journal, so I wanted to get it right. And also, since Tanya had created such lovely papers, I, I wanted to get it right for her as well, because she'd obviously gone to a lot of effort to create the papers, so I really appreciated that and, you know, appreciate her giving me the opportunity to use them because they are very lovely papers. So again, just measuring it and then I'll cut it. And I'm happy, just need to stick it down now. I'm just trying to get a nice clean match up there and all I do is take the little excess bit and fold it over because that will just help strengthen that edge anyway. So just pushing all the folds back into place
and just making sure that I've still got my little bit of spine there. So now I'm looking at how I'll decorate the inside and I decide to actually take a little bit off the inside edge of the envelope. I think it's about half an inch. I'm just going to mark them with a pencil on each envelope and then I will cut these little pieces out. Now the reason I took these out is that I want to have these bits as pockets and I just felt that the little bits might just be a bit too close once I get the papers in. And I just wanted to leave a little bit of room for things to go into the pockets. So I've cut them all out and I'm looking at the second design of paper to go on the inside. And again, just measuring and I'm going to cut three. Again, just taking the little white border off the paper. And obviously this is the sort of thing that could be done with paper from a paper pack or you could design your own paper to use. If I'd printed this on cardstock it would have made uh, the journal a bit firmer but actually it's, it's not too bad once it's, it's done. So just measuring it for the overall length, first of all. And again, just using that rotary tool to cut. I find that tool now as easy as using uh, one of the cutting boards. And certainly for me, I get get a better result than if I used scissors. So just measuring out three equal pieces. Hadn't pressed hard enough there, so just going to snip that with my scissors. And I will now glue these into place to form three pockets. Now I could have decorated the white on the inside, but I actually thought it was quite nice and bright against the blue of the paper. And again, I'm just going to use some double sided tape to get a good seal, but we'll also use the glue stick over it. Now, I did mean at this point to cut little half circles out of what would become the cover on the pocket, but I forgot. I looked at doing it later, but there was no way I could get my little circle punch to fit in without potentially damaging the paper, so. So I've glued that in place. As I say, I did mean to, to cut a half circle there, just to make it easier to see that there were pockets. You know, so if I'd been given this to, as a journal to someone, I would have preferred to have had that in. Just 
staying up the edges. So there I have my basic journal cover. So now it's time to make a signature. And I'm just kind of looking here at what size I would want to make the pages. I obviously want to make them a little bit shorter and slightly less wide so that they will fit within the journal. So I've written there that I want to make each page three and three quarters wide. And I write there by five and a half, but actually I meant five and a quarter. And it's when I do, so because of the double page, it will be seven and a half by five and a quarter. Although, as I say, I wrote five and a half, but later on, thankfully, I uh, rechecked the sizes and realized that that wasn't the size that I needed. So I'm just going to cut a number of papers now to fit into the signature. There you go. I'm kind of thinking about that, saying, is it five and a half? Because that's the length of the journal. And realise five and a quarter is what I want. So again, just using the rotary cutter. And any of the pieces that I have left over will be used for tags and journaling spots. So just checking that size-wise that's going to fit. And then off camera I cut a number of other papers. So I use the paper pack and I also bring in some sort of deli paper and also some lightly dyed tea paper that I had. And here I'm looking at how I might in might add in some pockets. Again, just checking the size that it's, it's going to fit okay. I decide in the end that I will make some side pockets, but I'll actually use the papers from the paper pack like so. So again, just double checking the size before I cut. By this point, my desk has a ton of stuff on it and of course I'm having to search for it all the time. So I then cut out a number of the side pockets and then I glue them onto the pages. Now for this I do use a wet glue and it's just a basic craft glue. And that seems to hold it quite well. So I now have my signature together. 
and I'm looking at how I'm going to bind it into the book. So I am going to use a small awl or pokey tool for this and I measure just roughly, well not roughly, I actually measure it quite accurately. I measure the centre point and then I measure a half inch from the top and from the bottom. So at this point I'm planning to punch three holes. And again, because I'm on a self-healing mat, I just punch it straight through. I'm just making sure that the holes are all the way through. Now, sometimes when I go to bind something in, at this point with the signature, uh, I might just try and line it up and put a pencil mark, but I decided in instead to make a small template. So I'm just putting that over the outside of the envelopes and then just pressing through so that I've got my small template made. I'll then line my papers up inside this and punch through them. And again, just punching right down and onto my craft mat. Now, at this point, I was thinking about doing a simple pamphlet stitch with the three holes, but I decided that instead I would do a slightly different type of binding, so I don't use that centre hole in the end, but it's one that can be used where you can then also use the thread to act as a kind of closure. So I've just got some embroidery thread here, and I'm basically just going to roughly work out how much I need. I'm actually going to double the thread up. So I cut it. I'll show you the length in just a second. So that's 12, 24, 36 and I think it was not quite 48. I could have actually done with it being just a little bit longer. I made it just a little bit too short. It, it works, but on a future one I'd do it a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is I've threaded a needle. I'm keeping my thread doubled. And now I'm going to go through the top of the uh, cover and then through top hole of my signature. So I've come from the outside to the inside. And I'm going to leave a good long tail on that, missing out the centre hole and going straight to the bottom. Now one of the benefits of doing it this way is that you could actually do it in a in a way that you could use this as a notebook and then take your pages out and put new pages in just by taking out the thread. So releasing the needle and I'm then just going to tie this into a double knot making sure it's tight on the inside. Then as I fold it in, you'll see that I can take one side of the thread one way and the other from the other side and I can tie that into a bow and that then acts as a closure. So here we are. Here's a quick flip through of the final book. Now I do want to do some more work on this, but in terms of making the book, it shows you where it's got to. So there we have the front pocket.
and I've just taken a piece of the leftover paper, folded it into a kind of envelope shape and that could then be used as a journaling spot. I've also put in another piece of paper there that could be used as a tag or a journaling spot or whatever. These are things that I'll come back to. It's so just flipping through, little side pocket there with potentially a general spot or tag. So plenty of room for journaling. I've not done any stamping in this as yet. I will probably go back and do some of that. I just wanted to get the basic journal made today. Another little envelope that folds out. It could be made into an envelope or it could just simply be a journal spot. A second pocket there in the middle. Now, you could actually put another signature uh, between the second and third envelope if needs be, but I decided I wouldn't do that on this occasion. And some final tags in the back. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching how I created this envelope and I hope that you will go and check out Tanya's channel Tartan Taz Creates and her Facebook group Creative Tartanite Tribe. So thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.